Let's jump right into the wild diversity of Malaysia, starting now. The Malays. Now, Malaysia looks to have two geographical areas, one being the Peninsular Malaysia and the other East Malaysia, and the cultural differences between Peninsular and East Malaysia interestingly still remains today. This country is a multi-ethnic and multicultural land with Malays, Chinese, Indians, indigenous people, and others that share a unique cultural identity that also practices their respective traditions. They have been described as Asia in miniature as well. The Malays do form the majority of the population that have the traditions and customs and are included in a grouping identified as Bumiputra. By definition of the Malaysian constitution, all Malays are Muslims, accounting for 50.1% of the Malaysian population, over 60% if you include the Bumiputra, but the Malays would be the largest ethnic group in the country. Malay would also be the national language being the largest community in the country, also dominant in the political landscape of Malaysia. What's interesting is that the first people to live in the area were indigenous tribes that still remain the Aran Asal and the Malays followed, who moved there from mainland Asia in ancient times. Chinese and Indian cultural influences came into the picture when trade began and increased with immigration to Malaysia. Other cultures that heavily influenced that of Malaysia include Persian, Arabic, and the British. The many different ethnicities that currently exist in Malaysia have their own unique and distinctive cultural identity, with even some crossover. Cultures have been meeting and mixing in Malaysia for more than 1500 years ago. Traders from China and India were welcome bringing gold, silks, Buddhism and Hinduism to Malaysia. About a thousand years later, Arab traders arrived in Malacca and brought with them the principles and practices of Islam. By the time the Portuguese arrived in Malaysia, the empire that they encountered was much more mixed than theirs. They found that Malaysia's cultural mosaic was of Malay culture and the cultures of Malaysia's two most important trading partners, the Chinese and the Indians, joined also with indigenous tribes that had lived in the forests and coastal areas of Borneo. Each have kept their traditions and community, creating Malaysia's uniquely diverse heritage. The mixture of Malaysia's wild cultural exchange could be seen in the Malay wedding ceremony. There are some Hindu traditions of southern India and they have also adapted the Chinese custom of giving little red packets of money at festivals. The packets given on Muslim holidays are green and have Arab writing on them. The architecture in Malaysia is a combination of many styles as well, from Islamic and Chinese styles to those brought by European colonists. Mosques have traditionally been based on Javanese architecture and Moorish design. Chinese Malaysians Now the history of Chinese immigrants to Malaysia has greatly contributed to the nation's culture as a whole. It's been said that they first settled in the Straits, mostly around Malacca, and adopted many aspects of Malaysian culture. They were known as Babas and Nonyas, and developed a set of practices, beliefs and arts, combining Malay and Chinese traditions to create a new culture. The Chinese communities brought traditional lion dances and dragon dances with them. But another group of Chinese who later came made an attempt to preserve their culture much more strictly, much like found in Penang, being much like China other than Malaysia. As an example, Chinese architecture could be divided into two types, traditional and Baba Nanyo. Baba Nanyo households are made of colorful tiles and have large indoor courtyards. Traditional Chinese influence can be seen in brightly decorated temples and terraced shop houses. Yes, slight differences, but there are some. Maybe you can name a few. But eventually the Chinese had formed the second largest ethnic group by settling in Malaysia for many centuries. The more common Chinese varieties spoken in peninsular Malaysia are Cantonese, Mandarin, Hokkien, Hakka, Hainanese, and Fuzhou. Sorry for the pronunciation. History has shown that the Chinese have integrated with Malay culture in a number of areas, including parts of Terengganu, and they formed the Baba Chinese in Malacca in the Sino Kadazan of Sabah. They further integrated under British rule that brought about a joint sense of identity to all the ethnic groups, bringing some unification with English ideals. 
An identifiable unified Malaysian culture could be seen between the different cultures within. Malaysian Chinese also typically hold the same festivals observed by Chinese around the world. Chinese New Year is the most prominent, lasting for 15 days. Chinese restaurants in Malaysia often do serve Malaysian dishes. What makes the food interesting is that the cooking styles are taken from one another and evolved. This means that although many Malaysian dishes originated from another culture, they have their own identities. The food is evolved from the original dishes. It's said that Chinese food is sweeter in Malaysian versions than the original. Chinese who moved to Malaysia centuries ago still use Chinese cooking techniques, just with Malay ingredients. East Indian The Indian community in Malaysia is the smallest of the three main ethnic groups, being about 11% of the country's population. They speak a variety of South Asian languages. Tamils, Malayalese, Punjabis, and Telugu are the people of Indian origin in the country. Tamils actually account for 86% of Malaysian Indians who began arriving in the 18th and 19th centuries during the colonial era. They brought Hindu and Sikh cultures and the Hindu tradition remains strong in the Indian community of Malaysia. It would appear that the population of East India to Malaysia came in three waves. The first wave being the pre-colonial period, the second wave, the colonial period, where the Portuguese had colonized Malaysia, and the third wave, the contemporary period since the 1990s. Workers in construction, the engineering industry, restaurants, and the IT sector, teaching and finance had grown. Indian laborers back in the day were brought to the country to construct the railways, to work in plantations, and in rubber and oil palm estates. Tamils from Sri Lanka were English educated, worked as teachers, clerks, public servants, doctors, hospital assistants, and other white collar jobs. Their religions are Hinduism, Islam, and Sikhism, with more than 86% practicing Hinduism. Indian architecture came with the Malaysian Indians, reflecting the architecture of southern India where most originated from. Some Sikh architecture was also imported. Hindus in Malaysia celebrate Deepa Valley, the festival of light, while Taipasan is a celebration in which pilgrims from all over the country meet at the Batu Caves. Visak, the day of Buddha's birth, is a public holiday. East Indian food has been huge in Malaysian cuisine. Indian cuisine has had a strong influence on traditional Malay cuisine, resulting in the popularity of curries in Malaysia. Indian restaurants are well received by Malaysians from all ethnic and religious backgrounds. I also became a huge fan of it as well. Roti Chennai, Nasi Kandar, Maggi Goren, and Mamak Rojak are Indian dishes unique to Malaysia. It's said that Nasi Kandar recipes are closely guarded secrets. Western countries tend to focus on North Indian cuisine, but in Malaysia it is largely based on South Indian cuisine because Malaysian Indians are mostly Tamar, but there are some Northern dishes like tandoori chicken and naan bread. The Europeans Here's a shortened version of history of the Europeans in Malaysia. It was during the 15th century that Malacca Malaysia's new settlement prospered and grew. The wealth and power of Malacca and other areas of Malaysia was based on trade with Arab, Chinese and Indian ships sailing there. The Portuguese noticed this and in 1511 sent an expedition to take it and it fell to them. The son of the Sultan of Malacca founded Johor, which grew to one of the several powerful trading states. They made their attempts to recapture Malacca but were unsuccessful. It wasn't until the 17th century an alliance was made with the Dutch to rid of the Portuguese. Although the initial attempts ended in failure, the Dutch finally captured Portuguese Malacca. They then drove out all Europeans from this area and remained allies with Johor. In the late 18th century, the British East Indian Company traded with and partially controlled India. They wanted a base in Malaya. They occupied Penang and founded Georgetown. In 1824, with the Treaty of London, the British and Dutch divided the region between them. 
The Dutch surrendered Malacca to the British and were given control of Sumatra and all the area below the Malay Peninsula. There were many political conflicts during this time within Malaya, but the British stayed out of it. But the British did continue to extend their influence over the northern Malay states until eventually in 1914, Johor also came under the British rule. This is why the traces of architecture in many parts of Malaysia is a mix with European influence. New materials such as glasses and nails were brought in by Europeans, changing the architecture. Today's modern westernized Malaysia. In 1971, the Malaysian government adopted a new economic policy and it was successful. Malaysia started to develop the most during the modern years of the 1970s, 1980s and the 1990s. Malaysia changed from being a poor agricultural country to a rich industrial one. The standard of living of the Malaysian people rose dramatically, but in 1991, the new economic policy was replaced by a new development policy. With all this rich history and wild diversity of its people, as I like to call it, modern Malaysia still maintains its roots. They now observe a number of holidays and festivities throughout the year to celebrate their history and diversity. The main holy days of each major religion are public holidays. New Year's Day, Chinese New Year, and the start of the Islamic calendar are all public holidays. Despite most of the festivals being identified with a particular ethnic or religious group, festivities are often participated in by all Malaysians. There is also what is called the open house, common during the festivities. It means that all well-wishers are received and that everyone, regardless of background, is invited to attend. Open houses are normally held at the home of the host, and the foods are prepared by the host. There are also open houses held at larger public venues as well. And also in modern Malaysia today, what you can expect from a country that was colonized by the British for over a hundred years and also part of the Commonwealth since 1957 is that most people probably speak better English than most of us here in North America. Maybe the easiest way to understand the highly complex cultural interaction in Malaysia is to look at the open door policy maintained during religious festivals. It's a way to break down cultural barriers for understanding. This would be the foundation of how Malaysia, throughout history, has learned to tolerate their own cultural diversities, making all of it their own. You can see this in their cuisines as well. Divided along ethnic lines, some dishes exist which have mixed foods from different ethnicities. Malaysia's cuisine is a multi-ethnic makeup of its population. The cultures from Malaysia are greatly influenced by Malaysian cuisine with strong influence from Malay, Chinese, Indian, Thai and Javanese as examples. Malaysia being a part of the ancient spice route was a large factor as well. Each ethnic group has its own underlying culture that separates it from others and they have achieved different levels of integration in modern Malaysia today. Well, I think I'll end my vlog here today. If you like this vlog, please don't forget to give me a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell for more of my coming content here. Thank you for watching my vlog. I hope you have a great day and see you soon.